Mark Zuckerberg is surely not a small name. Everybody knows him. He looks young and innocent, but is he? He might have started out as a college student with a fantastic mind at software and application development. But today, some confirmed sources suggest his involvement with some mega networks in the world. Who are these networks? What does Mark Zuckerberg do for them? How are they changing and shaping the world together? Before we go into the details, here is something you can check out. If you are feeling drowned in the sea of actions when your heart is constantly berating you from the inside, then it is a return back call from your creator. If you are looking for a proper direction to refresh in your Iman, then our best-selling book, 100 Heart-Touching Stories to Revive Your Iman and Faith, must be your most preferable selection to read right now. The link is in the description box below. In the year 2012, Mark Zuckerberg appeared in a Silicon Valley business conference in a t-shirt and a hoodie. While people were expecting him to appear in a suit and a silk tie, he amazed the world with his attire. This was a controversy in itself. But there was an even bigger controversy about to happen on the stage when the interviewer will take out Mark's hoodie. Some people criticized Zuckerberg for not dressing appropriately for his position as a CEO of a major corporation while others defended his choice of clothing as a symbol of his youth, innovation and disregard for conventional norms. His attire also apparently pointed at the future of the Silicon Valley business empires, which was going to be digitalization and youth. You know what else does digitalization mean? Digitalization also means that everything and everybody will be dependent on social media, internet and technology for getting the most minor things done. And then comes the hoodie of Mark Zuckerberg. What was in that hoodie and how does it connect with the age of digitalization, huge underworld networks and the Jolly organizations? When Mark Zuckerberg took off his Quran to start with. When they saw the fanfare along with the caravan, they flocked to it, leaving you behind on the pulpit. This ayat is a reference to an event where the Muslims left the Prophet Muhammad sermon and got attracted by this caravan that had all the songs and festivities going on. This is the power of indulgence. It distracts from what is right, important and real. Google, Facebook, Instagram in fact, the whole metaverse that has now come with its name Meta as well. These applications and websites are nothing but a form of intense indulgence. You can scroll on social media and you see how hard it is to put your phone down and do something worthwhile. This is because they are showing you exactly what you desire to watch. And that's why they say Google and Facebook have an algorithm that knows you better than you yourself. Mark Zuckerberg is a part of the bigger underworld, the Jali organizations that are working together to somehow control the world. The Netflix content that promotes all the sins and homosexuality are also a small part of this bigger, the Jali plan. Talking about indulgence, here's an 11 years old news. 
South Korean police have arrested a couple for starving their three-month-old daughter to death while they devoted hours to playing a computer game that involved raising a virtual character of a young girl. There's something else about this metaverse and its indulgence that you should know. This is how it makes us forget Allah and the Quran. And this is nowhere and even close to its end. In fact, they are planning to bring more for you to capitalize on your escape from truth and reality. Remember that caravan? Metaverse is that caravan. An addiction that is bringing destruction to our lives and society in the sweetest form. This is how Quran tells Muhammad wasallam to tell us Muslims regarding such indulgences and distractions. Say, what is with Allah is far better than amusement and merchandise. The Quran repeatedly mentions that hidayat and guidance is for those who have their minds alive and those who listen and those who see. With the 3D virtual world, we are going to live in the future with no connections with the real world whatsoever. This seems impossible. That is basically why Muslim scholars have come to call metaverse a true fitna, mainly for Muslims but generally for all mankind. May Allah protect us from this fitna and all its forms. May He grant us the ability to distinguish right from wrong in the present day world, which has made this so difficult for us. May Allah guide us all to get out of that caravan and come back to Allah, because what is with Allah is far better than amusement and merchandise. If you are feeling drowned in the sea of actions when your heart is constantly berating you from the inside, then it is a return back call from your Creator. If you are looking for a proper direction to refresh in your Iman, then our best-selling book, 100 Heart-Touching Stories to Revive Your Iman and Faith, must be your most preferable selection to read right now. The link is in the description box below. If you are feeling drowned in the sea of actions when your heart is constantly berating you from the inside, then it is a return back call from your Creator. If you are looking for a proper direction to refresh in your Iman, then our best-selling book, 100 Heart-Touching Stories to Revive Your Iman and Faith, must be your most preferable selection to read right now. The link is in the description box below.